Hello and welcome to episode three of our Try 312 Try Talk series. I'm your host, Coach Brian, and today I am excited to bring on a really good friend of mine, Dr. Erin Short. Dr. Short has received her doctorate degree from Washington State. Uh, excuse me, Washington University in St. Louis. She has over eight years of experience working in the Chicago area with significant experience working with endurance and CrossFit athletes. Erin is trained in women's health, the McKinsey technique, dry needling, Graston, video gates analysis, and manual therapy. As a former Division I swimmer at the University of Illinois and as a semi-elite marathon runner, Erin relates to her clients from her own athletic background. Erin also has several years experience competing in triathlon in both the Olympic and half Ironman distance. She has a fitness forward approach working with her patients and promotes staying as active as possible while respecting their injury. Erin lives in Lincoln Square with her husband and enjoys running, CrossFit, and checking out the Chicago food scene in her free time. Today, please welcome Dr. Erin Short. Hey, Brian, going well. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on to our Try Talk series. Uh, so great to have you. Uh, so for those watching, Aaron and I have actually known each other for a number of years now. And uh, for as long as I have been a personal trainer and triathlon coach, I think almost immediately I was introduced and started connecting with Aaron uh, as a physical therapist who at the time worked directly across the street from us uh, at the Lincoln Square Athletic Club uh, in the Lincoln Square area of Chicago. And it just turned into a really great mutual relationship where I would have triathletes that I would happen to have some kind of dysfunction over the course of their uh, their training life or, or some old injury might come up. And uh, Aaron was always there and willing to help support and uh, take care of our athletes. So Aaron, thank you so much for that. And say, uh, thank you so much for being here on our Tri Talk series. Absolutely. I'm excited to be here. All right. So let's let everybody get to know you just a little bit more. So tell us a little bit more about your background. And uh, we already kind of did your bio here earlier, but uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself, about your background in fitness, and uh, also how your background in fitness relates to triathlon and uh, things that we're going to talk about about triathletes? Uh, so I've been a very active person my entire life. That was one of the main reasons I got excited about getting into physical therapy is helping others, coaching others back into health. I was an avid swimmer since I was six years old and I swam uh, through college at the University of Illinois where I was in on the Division One team for four years. Um, so I've been involved in in endurance sports for my entire life. Uh, after I finished swimming uh, at the University of Illinois, I got really into running um, and triathlon. And actually, I did a couple triathlons. I've done several Olympic distance as well as a half Ironman. Um, and then through that transition is when I really got more involved and passionate about running, um, doing some half Ironmans, or excuse me, half marathons. Um, I've done eight marathons um, as well as been very involved in the Chicago running community. Uh, I ran with a couple semi-elite running teams. Um, all the while, while I was doing this, I was going through school. I was working as a physical therapist. And being involved in the endurance community and with different running groups, or triathlon groups, was a great way for me to share my knowledge with people. And um, I really grew to enjoy working with this population, not only you know working out together, uh, but also just working with these type of athletes through my career. Sorry for the pun, but it sounds like swimming runs in your family. Uh, oh, there uh, as you go. We were, as we were just talking before we jumped on the official recording here. So uh, just wanted to do a little shout out and say congrats to your mom who competed this past weekend in the Illinois Masters State Meet in Munster, yes. uh, Indiana. Uh, what did she compete in and what did she, uh, who was she swimming with? Uh, so she swam for the Naperville Waves. That's who she swims with. I believe she swam several events. And she swam the 100 back, the 200 free, the 50 free, and a couple relays. So uh, I was chatting with her today um, and she was like, I am really tired. And I was like, no, <laughs> you did so much movement yesterday. That is why, like, you know, make sure you're taking care of yourself today. So uh, do you become like Dr. Short to your mom after an event like that? Um, 
Yes. <laughs> to my both my parents, I'd say like to ask me questions, but they respect different times when we're talking, you know, she'll say like, I have a question that is <laughs> physical therapy. Are you up for answering? And, you know, I got to say, I was very lucky. My parents helped put me through college. So I'm like free PT, whatever you need it. I'm happy to help. So that's great. Well, congratulations yeah. to your mom. That's awesome. How old is your mom? She, well, she's going to be 65 in a month. Hopefully that's, she's not mad. I'm sharing this, but I, I, I uh, I think that's awesome. I think that should be, you know, uh, amplified and applauded, you know, and, uh, and show that, uh, to our listeners and to highlight to, uh, everyone out there that, uh, things like triathlon and swimming can be something that you can do, uh, as we, uh, experience life, uh, longer and longer. Uh, yes. Lifelong sport for sure. <laughs> lifelong sport and, and congratulate and applaud those that, uh, continue to compete and mix it up and, and challenge themselves. Uh, well into their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Uh, I mean, there were athletes uh, of all ages out there. Um, I was there as well. And it inspires me to want to continue and do more and keep uh, challenging myself because, you know, my, my approach is that if they're out there doing it, I should be able to be out there doing it as well. Uh, physical therapy. Uh, I would like to, you know, again, part of the reason why we wanted to have you on here today, Aaron, is to talk about physical therapy and its integration and its importance in endurance sports. And so from your point of view, when it comes to endurance athletes, is there, are there things that you are seeing most frequently with endurance athletes? So like uh, someone, maybe like your mom, who is an avid swimmer, is there things that are specific to the sport of triathlon or are there things that you see specifically that are uh, individual discipline related? So things you see mostly uh, from swimmers or from cyclists or from runners? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so all questions I am happy to address. The one thing I will say, so a shout out here to triathlon. One of the benefits I do find of the sport of triathlon is you do so many different activities. You're swimming, you're running, you're biking. So I will say, not saying that I don't see overuse injuries as much in triathlon because endurance sports is a lot of moving in, you know, one direction. Um, but because triathlon does require a good variety of the activities you're doing, I don't see quite as much, um, like, beating down or wear and tear on your body. So that is one thing that I think is great about the sport of triathlon in general. Now, that being said, as a triathlete, you're still very active. And so you're, you're still not, you know, you don't get a get out of jail card from having injuries potentially come into your training routine. So, you know, starting with swimming, I would say the primary thing that I'll see with swimmers or avid swimmers is usually having some kind of shoulder related injury, uh, shoulder or neck. So this could be a shoulder impingement, some kind of rotator cuff tendonitis. Um, or even sometimes having some neck pain, right? Depending on your breathing pattern, you know, and how your, your stroke is. Um, so that's, those are the things I generally would see with swimming with biking. The big things I'll see sometimes is like lower back, you know, being in the saddle for an extended period of time or it, it band syndrome. And then with running the runners, I kind of see it all lower extremity, right? So we'll see some piriformis syndrome, some glute knee tendinopathy. Um, you can see hip impingement. You can see knee pain. You can see Achilles. Um, so I'd say with those, with running, as it is the highest impact sport, that's usually the in, the, the sport that will produce the most amount of injuries. Um, but like I said, you know, the nice thing with triathlon is you do a lot of mixing up, um, mixing up your activities so it's not quite as, quite as pounding on your body. Now, if you're new to triathlon and you're hearing or new to any of these endurance sports and you hear all the things that can happen to your body, you're like, why would I even do this? This sounds terrible. But I will say, you know, there are many things that you can do to prevent yourself from experiencing these injuries. A lot of it just being smart with your training, keeping well balanced in terms of your strength, your flexibility. And I can't reiterate this enough and it's something that I've continuously been reminded of as, as I've gotten older in my uh, athletic career is really taking time to listen to your body and, and not push yourself too hard. Um, I think working with a coach or working with someone like Brian is a great way to help balance out because these are people that are experts and know how much your body can take and have a good plan in place. But those are some of the things, those are some of the things that I, I see. Um, and I'm happy to go to any specifics that you have or, you know, any questions about. Yeah. Um, and actually, uh, you already brought up a good point and things I'm pretty sure I've said a few times either on one of these try talks or during <clears throat> some of our multi-sport Mondays uh, on the try three, one, two channel is I always call out a great piece of advice that I got by a friend named Aaron short. 
uh, excuse me, Dr. Aaron Short, that uh, I believe uh, you've told it to several of my athletes uh, probably many times, is that if your body is whispering to you, listen. So I use that often for all my athletes and try to impart that same piece of advice. For athletes, do you feel that there is a tendency for us as endurance athletes to ignore the whisper and to keep pushing forward like, oh, it'll get better. Oh, I'll just work through it. Um, when is that point at which uh, that whisper starts becoming more of a scream? And what is your recommendation of like, how soon should they start seeking out uh, something like physical therapy? Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad that you asked that. So, you know, it's always hard because people will be like, well, how long will this be? Or what can I, you know, what's the timeline look like for recovery? And so much of that can just be dependent on you know, what you're doing and when you're coming into PT. The one thing I would say in terms of that whisper, a lot of my endurance athletes, the way that your injuries will occur is they kind of sneak up on you, right? Like I see, I work with some other athletes that'll do more extreme sports. And, you know, if your shoulder's dislocated or you twist your ankle aggressively, like, you know, like I'm done, I can't move, I, this hurts. Where a lot of endurance overuse injuries will sneak up on you over time, where they'll start off like, Maybe it'll happen like 30 minutes into your run and then you stretch and it goes away and the next day it's fine. But then as you continue to run, you'll start noticing it. Now it's 25 minutes into your run or now it's right away. So my general rule of, you know, when you're thinking about when do I seek medical help for this? Sometimes it is something where you can just back off your intensity and things may start to feel better. But if you are noticing any kind of dull or achy pain, even if it's very, very moderate, for two weeks or more. That's when I would say like you should probably see some physical therapy. If now there are other guidelines as well. If you're noticing that you're changing your form, like your running gait or your swim stroke, you know, you're limping either during or after, I think that's a good time to come into PT. Um, you know, if you have any sharp pain, so as you're running, if you have a sharp pain in your foot, that's not good. You should come see PT for that. And I know it's funny to laugh, but you know, these are all things that especially endurance athletes, as you people like to push themselves intensely. So they have tell, like a relatively high pain threshold. So you're looking when people are like, oh, it doesn't hurt that bad, but it could be still pretty intense. And the other thing too, is remember that you're doing triathlon, you're doing an endurance sport for fun. So if you're experiencing pain in other areas of your life, like, you know, it is okay when you're running, but then when you sit the rest of the day, you have terrible hip pain, like it shouldn't be affecting your work, your life, your time with your kids. So those are all things that I would say seeing a physical therapist is, is a good idea. Right. Um, and they may not all come at once. Like maybe like, I wouldn't say if it's, don't, if you have sharp pain, but it's not two weeks, that's still like come and address it sooner than later. So. Sure. Yeah, no, it's good. And, uh, you know, thinking of this too is, you know, understanding the thought process an athlete will go through is like, oh, I have a thing. What is that? That's uncomfortable. Oh, that kind of hurts. Um, and we're going through that process of like, well, should I tell my coach? What's my coach going to say? And then the next phase is like, when do I see? And then fill in the blank. So it's, you know, when is a, is it proper or more appropriate to go see a physical therapist? When is it time to talk to a doctor or even more specifically, when is it time to see a specialist? So, you know, it's been over five years now in the state of Illinois that you can see a physical therapist before going to see a, a physician. So that's one thing people will say is like, will my insurance cover it? Can I go straight to PT in the state of Illinois? Yes. Um, maybe there is a certain, there may be a certain, a few exceptions to that depending on someone's insurance provider. So always a good thing to double check, but sure. in general, you're able to see physical therapy direct access. Um, and I would say, you know, first of all, what does that look like going to PT? Um, at least with my company and my philosophy, we try and keep our athletes, our patients as active as possible. So constantly looking for ways of how can you cross train? How can you still be involved in your community? How can you still work on other muscular imbalances? Maybe during this time while you're resting something else. So I rarely will have someone come in and say like, oh yeah, you got to take two weeks totally off. Like you're doing nothing. And I think that's a big fear people have is like, yeah. what if I can't move again? Like, what if they're going to tell me and, and know that if it's, it does require some time off, because sometimes you do need to take some time off to respect that healing process. There's definitely other options and things that we're going to be doing with you at that time to help you feel stronger and, and better. 
The other question in terms of when do you see an orthopedic specialist? Um, I would say it just depends on the severity of your injury. I will work with patients and, you know, on their first day of an evaluation, if I'm, you know, as we go through their exam, if I'm seeing things that I think should be, you know, require possible imaging or a further workup, I will refer that day to see a specialist. Um, and if that's a good thing, if people don't know where to start, I know, you know, coming to work with me, working with Ignite, we have a lot of orthopedic uh, specialists in the area that we're comfortable and we know well. So we can even sometimes help facilitate a connection with a patient if they if they don't know who to see. No, oh, that's great. That's awesome. Once an injury occurs, and we've kind of already alluded to this, so uh, let's say there's a whisper, they come see a physical therapist, uh, they come see you, and they you, you get them into a recovery routine, so uh, to helping with whatever that dysfunction is. What's that typical time frame? And, uh, and I'm sure it all depends on severity and, and everything else like that, but uh, on some of the typical things that you see, what's usually a recovery time before they start uh, easing back into training? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And like, you're so right, it's hard to say. Um, you know, how long I'll be off. Like I said, I try and keep people as active as possible. So let's say you're coming in because you have ITB, you know, I, um, ITB pain and your knee is bothering you when you're running. Well, then I'm going to look at other activities. Like what can we do for swimming? What can we do for strength? Does cycling bother you? And we'll keep you training during your time in physical therapy. It may just be that you're backing up on your running volume. And usually it may even be like I generally with runners, if they're coming in and something is really, really aggravated, I will say we're going to take a week or two where we're not going to run, but then we'll pretty quickly start picking back into like a return to run, you know, a walk run program. And it also depends on how quickly their race is or their goal activity. Now, granted, there are certain things that like you need time off. Like if you're dealing with some kind of bone stress injury or there's a significant tear of something, you need to take time. But, um, you know, in general, I'm, I'm looking for, you know, maybe two weeks or so of really pulling back and then starting to slowly get back in. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, after two weeks taking some time off of running, you're running 10 miles the next weekend or anything like that. But it's more of like working with people to help them achieve their goals. I will say as a general recovery rule, like usually most things you're looking four to six weeks and you're going to start to see definite some, some improvement. Okay. So um, good thing to know going in that it, they should be they should expect to be patient with their return to uh, full-time activity. Not that they're taking everything completely off, although that may be a prescription, but that uh, they need to be patient with uh, coming in. Uh, and how frequently are you hoping that uh, athletes will come sort of work with you directly? And then at what point is it mostly at home stretching or recovery exercises? It will depend on what we're coming in and working for. I would say people will check, come see me once or twice a week, depending how acute something is or flared up. And also the, you know, can, you know, if people are open and, you know, very religious about doing things on their own at home, or if they need a little bit more of encouragement. Um, the one thing I, I love the spaces that I work in are pretty um, state of the art fitness facilities. So I do have access to some, you know, barbells and some sleds and some higher level equipment. So, you know, when people come work with us, we're definitely, we're pushing our athletes, like we're helping them get better, but it's not like you're coming in and doing like a million clamshells or something like that. Like I'm really trying to load you and make, make people stronger athletes. So yeah, yeah. I think today more and more, it's becoming so much more fitness and movement forward. More of the research is showing the importance of loading, of doing like lifting heavy weights, of staying as active as possible. And, you know, doing some of those lower level act like exercises, there's nothing wrong with that. Like they're, you know, they're the, every exercise can have its time and place. Right. But yeah. I find to make that change and to help people get back into doing a high level, really, you know, badass stuff like triathlons, you got to yeah. have them do badass stuff in PT. So yeah. actually now you're bringing up a good point. And I now want to really ask this question is that, uh, I mean, you've already brought some up, but is there something else? There's like another one or two things that have been myths about preconceived notions about what physical therapy is or things that people used to do or used to prescribe. But now that we know a little bit more, um, there's more research that's out there about things like this. Is, is there anything that uh, any, any other myths out there that you would like to dispel that people may have about physical therapy that may actually uh, open their eyes a little bit more and be more willing to come see therapy? One of the things now um, that's more and more present in physical therapy is we're not doing as much passive modalities. So what does that mean? 
I feel like back in the day, you'd come into PT and they'd like put some electrodes on you and a, a hot pack. And that would be like part of the, the way that you do therapy. And that, there's so much little research that shows that that makes a long lasting change. Now it feels good. It feels right? good. At the time, like, it though. feels good. I mean, like, I, yeah, sure. But that's not in the long run going to make a big difference. So, you know, with Ignite, when you're working with, with me, you're definitely going to be doing things that are going to be more active, right? Um, now I do hands-on work with people. That's definitely part of my care, you know, whether it's dry needling or cupping or joint mobs or just deep soft tissue work. I think that's definitely has its time and place and, and really does help make a change. So I'd absolutely do that. But we do a lot of, we, I, I really like to reinforce and, and have people do more loading, heavy loading. Um, the other thing, you know, kind of talking, going back to like the master's program swimming, like we talked earlier, is the importance of lifting weights and being active as you age. Um, I think that's something else you'll see that people that are older will come to PT and they're doing like light band work um, or they're not doing things like on the floor. But, you know, when you're older, you got to do yard work. You have to clean your house. You have to get up off the floor if you fall. So I think Just normal doing daily things, activities, normal daily things require heavy lifting. So that's something else that I like to do with my patients that, of all ages is, is really like work on loading people. And, and I'd like I want people to come to PT and if they say like, Oh, like I'm feeling that was like a, that was, that was hard. Like I'm sweating. It's like, good. You know, like that's good. So. Excellent. No, I think that's great too. And I, and I love what you said about the uh, athletes that as we age, we need to continue to do things. And also as a personal trainer is to lift weights, right? Is how important that will be for those that uh, start getting into, you know, are more advanced ages. Uh, so over 40, over 50. And uh, I work with athletes currently that I just had a new group of women come to see me and have started strength training with me because they realize that, hey, we are getting a little bit older and we are now hearing and seeing uh, information out there that is uh, progressing the idea that we need to be actually in the gym lifting heavy weights, right? To be able to help strengthen our bones, to help strengthen our muscles so that if and when, like as we advance in age, things like falling down doesn't become a lethal something Absolutely. that to us, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I have, a, I have an athlete who is 68 years young, uh, actually, excuse me, just turned 69. And uh, before coming to see me, she had a lot of issues uh, from a spill. Uh, so wrist, uh, flexion, like elbow flexion, can't get really good extension, uh, knee replacements. Like, I mean, you name it, uh, she's kind of gone through a little bit of the ringer, but now that we started working together and again, a slow progression, but, uh, but good progression of lifting actually heavy weights. Uh, she actually did have a spill outside of one of the grocery stores that's around us here in the Lincoln Square area. And she came in, she's like, Brian, you're so, pr uh, you'll be so proud of me. Like I fell down. And it didn't hurt. And I think that, I mean, out of anything else, like her goal isn't to like become a power lifter at 69 years old. You know, right. her goal was to like, I want to, if, if and when I fall down, I can get back up. And the worst thing that is, that has occurred is a bruise on my hip. Right. right? Exactly. So uh, and whether that's with a personal trainer, going through physical therapy, learning the things, le learning good uh, modalities that can help you. Uh, move correctly, lift weights more properly, uh, and hopefully add that into your general routine on a weekly or daily basis. Uh, I, I could not applaud that uh, that focus and that goal and that uh, uh, that hope for everybody that is out there, especially triathletes and other endurance athletes who tend to stay Absolutely. away from the gym sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Uh, do you see that fairly frequently with uh, with triathletes or? let's say like runners or, you know, any other endurance athletes? Uh, Cause I know you work with both endurance and on the CrossFit side. So do you feel like there, there's like almost like crowbar separation between the two, or do you feel that there's becoming more of a, of a blend or a hybrid athlete? Out there? That's a great question. I mean, I do feel there's definitely are different um, like viewpoints on training with both types of athletes. Right. Um, but I think that there's a place for doing strength training and endurance program. I definitely think there's a place for doing more cardio training in a big weightlifting or CrossFit program. You know, for my endurance athletes that don't love like lifting weights, I, I kind of like or strength or prehab or rehab. I kind of look at it, at it like how you would take like a daily vitamin or a daily, like if you had to take medication, 
you know, of not that you need to do it daily, but if your joy is to run or your joy is to do triathlons or swim or bike, you know, you have to do these other things that maybe you don't love as much to stay healthy. Just like maybe you don't love, you know, maybe if you're taking your vitamin or something, it's a pain to remember to do or, you know, any other daily routine things that can be a little bit cumbersome or not something that you don't love doing, but you got to do it. And I think that's how you want to look at doing your PT exercises or look at doing a strength program as an endurance athlete of it is, you know, if anything else, it's great to get stronger. You're, I hope that it provides people happiness, feeling good and moving better. But if anything else, just to keep them healthy so they can do those activities they really enjoy. That's, that's how I like to put it is more of a shaping of, you know, you want to be active. You kind of got to, you got to pay taxes here. You got to <laughs> do some things to, to uh, keep your body healthy. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And, uh, and, and getting back into the physical therapy part of it. Um, because I know I work with athletes where we, we go through, we do training, we, they do strength and endurance with me. Um, uh, but then on occasion, like they, they get another little niggle in the shoulder or like in their knee or something like that. So, um, do you see for a lot of people that, uh, that, physical therapy is a healthy ongoing i say activity uh a thing that they will will continue to do throughout their life there is a time like let's say if you like example with your shoulder if you hurt your shoulder there is a time where you're going to more intensely do physical therapy for your shoulder right you're coming to see me we're doing your hands-on working your mobility or addressing those muscular imbalances you have your strength and your stretching routine and maybe you're doing it like four times or four or five times a week now there is a time your shoulder is going to feel better you're going to get back to doing what you want to do. And there's that time where you do ask, like, will I do these exercises the rest of my life? And I think it is better to just try and integrate them into your routine. So what that means is maybe you make your shoulder warm up as part of your warm up before you swim. Or maybe when you're going to lift weights, you spend five extra minutes stretching before, after, or you, you build them in. So it's not a like, yes, for the rest of your life, four days a week, you need to do a half hour of shoulder exercises. <laughs> but it is something where you need to build those exercises or those mobility um, stretches into your into your life, into your routine to keep things at bay. You know, and the one I do see at different times is when people have like kind of chronic, like they'll have your hip pain or low back pain. And I do think that doing some routine stretching daily is something that is, you know, strength work daily can be very beneficial. What is your advice for those that uh, if they have sort of a nagging thing that they seem to be going back to uh, physical therapy for that, you know, it gets better and then it gets worse, it gets better, it gets worse. Is it mostly because they just stop doing those things to keep it uh, moving correctly? Uh, and what is your advice for trying to be more proactive and preventative and uh, and things that tend to be a little bit more chronic? I, I like to think about giving people tools because, yeah, there's a good chance that things may pop up again as you build up your training intensity or your volume or life happens or whatever. Um, so I like to give people the tools that I'll say, like, hey, if your back acts up again, here are these things that you can go back to doing before you, like, sound the alarm. The other thing that I would ask somebody who is having something continuously pop up is, let's take a look at the other factors that may be contributing to this. What's your stress like? What's your sleep like? What's your training volume and intensity like? Because you're continuously experiencing an injury in the same area. And you could say like, I'm doing my stuff. Then there means there's other variables that may be contributing to why you are continuously having this. So I think it's important to, yes, keep up your PT exercises and routine. But if you're starting to have these nagging injuries that won't go away, exploring other options or other avenues that could be contributing to your, your injury risk. All right. Fantastic. Thanks, Aaron. Um, and so uh, looking ahead to, uh, to the season this year, um, anything on, on near end, uh, any like new learnings, uh, new things that you are adding to your repertoire as a physical therapist or general strength coach uh, as a professional, anything that, uh, that you're, you have your eyes on that uh, is going to help uh advance your knowledge and help your clients just a little bit more this coming year. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking. Um, recently, I was excited. I passed my certification uh, to be a certified strength and conditioning specialist. So congratulations. I, thank you. I got that. And I just finished past that test in April. So I'm really excited and working on, you know, um, building those skills, using those skill sets in my in my um, work with my patients. 
Um, in terms of the year ahead, I'm one area I'm really interested in expanding my knowledge on is on the acute chronic workload ratio. And a little bit about that is that's working with how to properly load athletes as they are going through their training intensity. Um, I feel like for a long time, it's been kind of a generic, like the 10% rule with building your mileage or whatever. And there's so much more in depth to that. So I want to continue to explore that area um, to, to grow my knowledge there. All right. Fantastic. Um, and, uh, so before we, uh, finish up here, uh, Aaron, where can they find you? Uh, or I'm assuming you're on the socials, uh, or if there are people listening that are in the Chicagoland area, maybe even more specifically on the North side of Chicago, Yes. where can they find you? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Ignite Physical Therapy has two locations. Um, we have one in the West Loop and Ravenswood. I am based out of the Ravenswood area. Um, I work out of two different fitness uh, facilities, one called Feast Fitness and then Bolt Fitness. Um, and they're both located right on Ravenswood. So I'm up in the, the Ravenswood area. Um, and anyone who has any specific, you know, questions about triathlon, questions about training, injuries, I'd be, I'd be happy to assist. Uh, and where can they find you online? Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, I am on Instagram at aaron.short.dpt. Um, also email aaron at igniteptsp.com. All right. And we will make sure we have all those links down below in the description. Aaron, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, but before we let you go, we have a little thing on our Tri Talk series that uh, we asked all of our uh, guests to give us uh, three pieces of advice for beginning triathletes. Uh, one inspirational message uh, to them in the last two minutes here. So uh, if you will, your your three pieces of advice to start with uh, for any new triathletes. Awesome. Yes. All right. So three pieces of advice. First one, be very aware of your overall volume and training intensity. As you are new to the sport, it's easy to get wrapped up and excited, but just take things slowly, build slowly. Number two, enjoy the community. Um, the triathlete community, enjoy the team that you're working with. I think working with people and exercising with people makes it so much better and so much more fun. Uh, third one, listen to your body. I cannot emphasize this enough, especially as you're new to the sport. It's really important to watch those whispers, those niggles. If you have any questions, I would, you know, take a minute and pause before it's too late. So you can really address those. Maybe take a little bit of time away from your, from your heavy, heavy training, but then be able to enjoy that end competition. Excellent. And what would be your inspirational message to those new athletes out there? Absolutely. I love thinking about this. Um, I would say, remember that movement is a privilege and competing in triathlon is a gift. And if you're getting wrapped up in your training, if you're getting stressed out with your schedule or getting your workouts in, remember you get to do this. And it is truly a gift to be able to push yourself to exercise, to get your heart rate up, to move. Um, and really enjoy, enjoy that it's a privilege to move. Awesome. I love that so very much. And, uh, I try to give myself that gift every single day, as well as that gift to all of my athletes that I work with, uh, as I'm sure you do as well to all of the people that you see, uh, for physical therapy and soon to be for also strength and conditioning. Uh, yes. so Aaron, thank you so much for being here today. It was great chatting with you. I'm sure we'll see you again. Uh, if you'd yes. like to come back on and maybe talk even more specifics, uh, or maybe if uh, we ever get very specific questions from our general audience about physical therapy, uh, maybe we do a, a segment uh, where we just uh, can a uh, answer questions from our audience there in Chicago. That'd be awesome. I'd love that. All right, Aaron, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day and uh, let's go out and enjoy this wonderful Chicago weather. Yes, I love it. Thanks for having me, Brian. I'll see you around. Sounds great. Thank you.